Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy, BN, a.k.a. Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are going to be touching on a spending guide breakdown where we focus on priority order for what you should be using your money on when you're trying to get the best return on your investment. So we're going to break that down today. There's, I think, about seven or eight. We are going to be excluding any of the kind of pop-up bundles, the ones that you get when you hit the milestones for leveling up your city to a certain point and you see the base upgrade happen. If you see if when you're leveling up your heroes, sometimes this will happen every, you know, maybe 10 or, or, or 20 level intervals depending on the hero. And, you know, so these are just, those are the types of pop-ups, right? So we're not going to be focusing on those, but just the things that are available to us to purchase already when we get in without having to hit a certain milestone. So with that being said, if you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell. And of course, if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment description right down below. So here we go. Where's my Agua casual mode? Okay, I'm good. So here we go. We're going to be focusing on number one. <clears throat> so number one is actually going to be the worker support. And this one is, unfortunately, I actually already have it unlocked over my gems, even though I'm not able to spend on this account. But I am going to be showing you how this looks here. So let me skadoodle like this. So here's another instance, and I'm just going to show you the worker support bundle. This is the one that permanently unlocks your second builder queue. It's for my currency, $4.91. And you'll unlock, or permanently unlock the second builder queue you get 1.25 or 1250 gems you'll get a common gift chest which you can use when you're in alliance and then it'll obviously gift everyone in that alliance that's pretty neat you'll get the eight hours of speed ups and then accumulating for these is actually three hours and 20 minutes so you're looking at 11 hours and 20 minutes of speed ups but with three hours and 20 of those minutes being building speed ups specifically these eight hours here are universal speed ups so this to me if i'm gonna spend right from my approach where i may only even at this point consider light spending uh, because I'm, I'm usually predominantly free to play but for me if i'm going to buy this is the first thing i'm going to get i want to be able to get access to that second building queue so that way i can have two building queues going up constantly helping me progress my city level then Number two is going to be growth fund. Now, I can actually get off of this one now. This is what we'll do. Awesome. So now we'll go back into the goods. So growth fund is going to be the second thing that I'm going to buy. And you may argue that there's some other things you can get that are a little bit lower cost. But the fact is, is that being able, especially if you are getting uh, gems, I mean, you have to think about it like this. You're going to be able to level pretty quick here, right? Uh, I do not, for, I mean, I can see you getting at least to 11 pretty soon. You know, I don't know if I could, maybe day one. Uh, again, I, I haven't tried to hard push yet, but I could actually see level 11 being somewhat attainable, especially if you're doing the max helps and you're mid-maxing. So let's assume for a moment that you can attainably get to 11 day one. You're still looking at, if I could do some math real quick in my head, uh, what is that, 2,200, 42, 4,100 gems that you're looking at um, just for the 1054. That isn't bad uh, compared to some others. For example, in worker support, you're getting 1,250 gems for $4.91. So I'm pretty much a little more than, barely anything more than doubling this, but I'm almost doubling uh, the double from worker support, right? As for just just in gems, so I still think it's worth it, um, especially if you just want to milk that. Otherwise, you can hit that if you want to. You know, maybe after you hit fourteen, right? Some people might th say to themselves, "Well, I'm going to see more value in it uh, at that point, right?" Compared to me spending immediately. Um, I think it's really just up to you. Do you want to spend right away? Do you want to wait till maybe you hit 14, 17, where maybe there's a little bit more value overall in it? Um, I think that's up to you. However, I, you know, again, if I had, you know, 10, 10 50 lying around, I, I don't think I'd have a problem with spending this. So that's why I'm putting this as number two. Number three is going to be 
your monthly packs, specifically your advanced monthly pack. Uh, the value for this compared to uh, doing the basic monthly pack um, is just a lot more valuable. So um, you get the 1500 gems instant, but you do get 12,000 gems over the course of the 30 days, right? So that brings you to 13.5, right? Which is double the gems for less than double the price. You also end up getting 90 hours of universal speed ups. You get 9 mil gold and wood. You get 3.375 mil iron. You get 1.5 million mana. And then you get 6,000 command point recovery items across that 30 day period, which is well more than what you're getting for the basics. So for me, paying the five bucks a month, I, I actually just think is a no brainer. Uh, I, th I think this is great value that you're getting consistently. You could make the argument maybe doing this over growth fund. I just like the long-term investment for growth fund where you hit it once, you don't have to worry about it. It's a one-time thing. Uh, very similar to what your worker support is. Um, then we get to the number four purchase, which I actually think is just your first purchase. Right, so I think just going ahead and getting Lilia out of the way, plus you get the 10 gold keys, you can't be mad at that to get a free 10 pool, and then you get 20k uh, hero XP. The 100 gems is, you know, more of a small little beaded icing on the cake. Uh, you get 200 honor points, you get the 2000 Vestals 1, and then you get uh, just some extra RSS here, right? You get the nice territory relocation if you need it. So I think the bulk, the, the big things here is Lilia, the gold keys, and then the tactics manuals, which I think is really good. And it's only $1.05, again, on my currency. So I think this would be my fourth purchase, right, that I would make. And then the fifth purchase I'm going to go with, and I'm going to give you the total as well here near the end. The fifth one is, for me, is actually going to be the Titan's Legacy Lights Inspiration. So in order to get there, you're going to essentially go here to where your seasons are in Titan's Legacy. And then you're going to go to Seasonal Challenges. Or sorry, excuse me. We're going to go Rewards. And then this is where you go, right? So you're going to do Insight Rune Unlock. And this is why, right, you have Devout Prayer, which is your basic level. And then you have uh, Lights Inspiration, which unlocks the basic level. It auto puts you to level 10. And it increases Rune XP obtained uh, from completing uh, by 30 percent the reason i say this is because it's the same price if this wasn't the same price then i would just do devout prayer right and i'm sure maybe maybe it's just a discount for the first season and then when the second season comes around the discount is no longer there but if this is the same price then yeah i'm definitely going to take lights inspiration however again to be clear uh, if it's not, and I, I want to say this, I haven't done the calculations. I'm assuming that you can still max this out to level 80. It would almost kind of be ridiculous to me if you couldn't um, max it out pending you did everything, uh, right? And I'm sure there's a little bit of margin for error there, I, I would hope. But if there's no discount on this, then of course you just do devout prayer. So, uh, and again, I, I like this. I, I just think, right, and you get you get every 10 levels, you get a certain tier. And what's kind of cool is this changes here to the right. So you can see after we pass 10, it kind of shows you what the next tier level is. And you also get, you know, one of the uh, legendary artifacts. So I actually think that's pretty cool. And the amount of rewards that you get here for the $10 is just insane. So for me, Titan's Legacy, even if you're just, like I said, regardless of which one you do, if it's the same price, obviously do the better one. But the, the more than worth it here. So this for me would be my fifth purchase. Now, with these five purchases, it only brings, and I say only because to me this is a low amount. It only brings your total to $31.95. So give or take 32 bucks, right? Just to do those five things. To me, that is extremely worth it. Even if I only ever spent $32 for the entire time that I played the game, that to me is value, right? I still view the five, the four dollar ninety one cent value uh, for the monthly packs and the advanced monthly pack is great. I still think there's great value there. I may even consider spending that monthly, but at least at minimum, I would do the first five. Then we get to number six, right? And these are kind of where I would consider more of my optional purchases, right? I view the first five as kind of being more of staples and kind of minimums, right? If you're going to spend and then in order. Of course, if you just have a ginormous boatload of cash, it doesn't matter, right? You can scratch the order. You could probably max out everything every day, no problem. But if you're like me and you don't really spend, 
I'm really trying to look at where is my best investment going, right? Where's my money best going to suit me depending on what I'm going to purchase? So number six for me, then we're going to go back to daily deals. So daily deals is going to be uh, this one. And really, it's kind of actually just doing the 491 because you save the money and you actually get a good amount, right? So you get 15 just from all these, right? You get 1,500 gems for the 491. You get 750 honor points. So if you put all of that towards VIP, you would come out with 22,250, right? That you could invest into VIP daily. Uh, so that's not bad. You get 14 hours worth of universal speed ups. You get five silver keys, a gold key. You get 150K gold and wood. You get three snow owl treasures, which basically is, I mean, it's okay, right? You can either get Nika coins, hero, legendary hero, silver key, or gold key, right? So it's one of these, uh, excuse me, six things that you can get. And then you get the simple gift chest, which is just a chance to. To, to get those things so but I, even if you minus that the the gift chest i still think spending the four dollars and 91 cents to do everything here uh, right now obviously if you're considering doing that daily and then you have to factor in you know what that potential cost is going to be just let's say on a 30-day period you're looking at 147 dollars and 30 cents right so 147 148 dollars that you're going to spend monthly Right, if you if you were to buy this every thirty days, I actually think what would be cool is if they added in a monthly purchase for the dailies. Like if they just said, "Hey, here's a, here's a price for how much it would cost if you just want to pay up front." Right? Maybe maybe it's one hundred and twenty five dollars or something. Right? And and it says, "Hey, we'll give you a daily deal each day if you pay a month in advance." To me, that that would actually be pretty cool if they added something like that, and I could actually see that being. Uh, something of value. However, um, I do like this, and that's why I think this would probably be the next best thing to really get, um, obviously, if you're going to decide to spend on some more optional items. Then we get to number seven for me. Number seven is looking at great value bundles. However, I have a specific order here that I like. So when I'm looking at all of these, right, obviously, each bundle has their unique factors, and, uh, you know, you end up having, I'm sure these refresh, right, you can see these here, where they'll end up refreshing. I'm sure there's going to be more than this, but just based on the ones that I can see right now, for me, Treasure Forge, right, this is giving you Forge Artifacts, City of Hope, this is for building, Path of Knowledge for Research, Heroes, this is giving me um, Essence that I can use to level up, and then a, a token, uh, Treasure of Tamaris, this is Universal, artifacts and also i'm still getting some essence um uh too as well uh, excuse me i meant metals for <laughs> two bears always getting those mixed up um obviously metals are for skilling up and then essence is for uh skilling up your, your artifacts uh, and then we have march of congress right that's for training speed and then we have time to, time of harvest that's just kind of pure bigger rss so for me the way i look at it is that if i'm gathering constantly and I am consistent with that. I'm leveling up to get more cues, more, uh, more Legion cues available to me, and I'm keeping up with my RSS gathering and income, then to me, what is of more value would be City of Hope, right? And this may depend just on your, you know, what you're doing uh, and obviously, you know, how you approach the game. For me, I like being able to invest a little bit more on buildings and then I would go path of knowledge, right? Because then I could utilize that second research queue, especially if I am doing really well. But I would pace myself, right? I would kind of, I don't know if I would really invest into any great value bundles immediately. I may consider waiting to see kind of, you know, once I go through and I kind of min-max my prerequisite requirements to upgrade my city, right? What is my kind of daily average income rate? for RSS and anything else before I consider really going hard and spending because you might get to a point where you're bottle capped, right? Or you're bottlenecked, meaning that I can, I can buy these regularly, but I might just, I might just dry up on RSS and I'm over here with a bunch of speed ups waiting, right? And then, you know, I either have to wait to get those until I can use the speed ups or I have to you know, consider purchasing something else. So for me, take this kind of a step at a time. Uh, again, this is approaching it from that kind of light spend view where you don't have a big budget and you're looking how you can min-max these things. So City of Hope for me, Path of Knowledge would be two, 
Number three would actually be Time of Harvest just because it's pure RSS and I think there's a little more value there than some of the other areas and I'll explain why in a minute. And then I would go March of Conquerors for training speed ups, right? Then that's just if I need to, you know, bulk train or if I need to retrain if a fight or something is breaking out, I have that opportunity. Now the reason I say that is because of a few things here. If I do Treasures of Tamaris, I'm getting Epic and Elite Essence. Now, I'm not going to need to really upgrade my Elite Artifacts for the most part, right? You're probably predominantly going to be using Epics and Legendaries, uh, and then eventually to a point, probably the majority of Legendaries, as I'm sure they're going to come out with more Artifacts. So you kind of have to think about it long term as well. If, if I go Heroes of Tamaris, I'm also getting Elite Medals and Epic Medals. Now, sure, at the moment, Epic Heroes are still useful. But over a period of time, as you start introducing more, I'm not really getting, I'm not getting max value on everything that's included in this bundle. And for some of the other bundles, that also factors in. Now, of course, we're only probably looking at limited. I'm sure there might be some other bundles that have not popped up here. So, you know, again, this part is going to be, this part, this portion here could be limited perspective. But you want to try and think about when you're purchasing something, can I use everything in what I am buying? And that really should be your type of common denominator approach so you're really getting the best value on everything that you're spending your money on. And then if we get to the number eight uh, optional purchase, for me, this one is actually going to be on VIP to get Hosk. And this is really only if you feel the need to spend to level. So you got to be VIP 10, which means that you're going to... Uh, have to hit 150k VIP or honor points and then it's 20 bucks to purchase the level 10 exclusive chest right and you'll get 60 a hosk which means you'll get the unlock and you might be able to scale one or two I think one or two times uh, give or take and right so but from my understanding I don't believe there's any free way to get hosk unless possibly they come in the wheel uh, for whatever reason or some type of other event that ends up popping up and obviously of course that would probably still be a slow grind so that's why I say it's more of an option because uh, it, it really has to be something you kind of have to invest long term on and you know you might not just be satisfied <laughs> with, with one purchase. So just to keep that in mind. Now I do want to point out there's other things that you can purchase, right? You can do the wheel, you can do Forge of Light, which is for the higher artifact uh, pull percentages that you can do where you would usually spend uh, gems to do that, right? So you'd have to go and purchase more gems. My pro tip here at the end of the video is that it is important to recognize how you're going to spend gems. I am always going to be of the belief that VIP is where you need to spend your gems, right? You just, doesn't matter what you do. Every single thing, every single VI, every single gem that you gather, every single, well, honor point is obviously because you can only use it on one thing. But for gems, every single gem you gather should be going to VIP. That is my belief. Uh, and it's always going to be that, being able to max that out. And the thing is, is you have two milestones you really want to hit. The first one is that you want to hit VIP, excuse me, eight, because you want to unlock that second research queue, right? And it takes you 35K points to get here. So this is really your first goal. Your second goal is then going to be VIP nine. And sure, you, you're going to get the increased build speed, I think, by 5% because you're at 10, right? So it goes up to 15. That's great. But really what you're doing it for is the daily gold key, right? Because comparing these two, you get the daily select hero that you get where you get one token of each, right? We click on this and it's the same thing. But you get the daily gold key. That's the important part. So really VIP 9 should be everyone's goal to hit. And even if I go max, you know, the amount of gold keys I'm getting, you can see here, you know, it's not changing and the amount of um, uh, these ones does, right? So I can get these and you'll see, I think from 11, it goes to two, right? So you can see VIP 11, it goes to two. Um, and I think that was three at 12. Yeah. And then it's probably three all the way to 15. It is. So, right, that's kind of your goals, right? That you want to try and get to 10, uh, excuse me, in... Uh, in, in, in that regard, or excuse me, sorry, nine, <laughs> I was saying. So 75K VIP points really should be your, your primary goal. And then just working to try and get all the way to VIP 15 because you just get so many more benefits from it, um, right? And obviously the big ones here is probably going to be gather speed and train speed because if you're free to play, 
by the time you hit VIP 15, right, which is a million VIP points, you're, there's a good chance you'll probably already have max buildings. You'll probably, I would hope, <laughs> probably already have max research, if not be really close. So the additional bonuses that you're going to get at 20% top out is not going to be the biggest thing that you're really doing it for, right? You're going to do it for gather speed and for training speed, right, to get those final ones. So, um, and then obviously to get the, the four tokens for each, right, pending that you still haven't maxed those three uh, heroes out by that time so that pretty much covers it for me right so i hope you guys enjoyed this best spending guide priority purchase order from uh, the kind of low spend right min max perspective because for me when i'm purchasing things that's really where i'm coming in because i just don't purchase all that much so it's really important that i'm always trying to find the best value that i can i hope you guys enjoyed what i will pose the question to you though however now for those of you that are still here right do you agree with the order do you disagree do you think some positions could be switched um, right and remember the approach is coming from not you having a plethora of money it's if you only have a small budget what is the most valuable to you and then what's the order that you would purchase and this is my order my reasoning my justification for doing so and I, of course i'd love to hear what you guys think so let me know in the comments down below that is it for me as always until next time i'll catch you later